Oh yeah. Oh, her stinger is lodged in my skin. Medicine mimicry is a form of mimicry where harmless species have evolved to imitate the warning signals of harmful species in order to scare off their enemies. While this appears to be a true bumblebee, this is actually just a hoverfly that coincidentally feeds on pollen and nectar much like the bumblebee. Bumblebees have round bodies covered in soft hair, making them appear real fuzzy and cute like a little teddy bear. They have aposematic warning coloration, often consisting of contrasting bands of color and different species of bumblebees in the region often resemble each other in a mutually protective malaria mimicry, where two harmful insects, often poisonous, venomous, or foul tasting, mimic each other, making it easier for predators to identify possibly harmful insects. Predators often learn to avoid these very similar looking species. In contrast, aggressive mimicry is where a predator mimics its prey. This allows the predator to get close to its prey, in turn giving it a better opportunity to catch its prey that is what we have here. Inside of this capsule, I have a bumblebee mimic. It's probably the best mimic I've ever seen of a bumblebee. You can see it really, it's hard to distinguish this from a bumblebee, but this is actually in the robber fly family. And that mimicry by mimicking a bumblebee may be an advantage for this predator to prey on something like a bumblebee. Now let's go ahead and let it go because this is not what we're looking for. I imagine it's gonna fly away right away. Oh, there it goes. All right, look at that. And it's gone. I'm Alex, the host of The Great Outdoors. Inside of this little capsule, I have a bumblebee. No wait, this is a carpenter bee. And this is a bumblebee. Today, we're gonna to test the sting of both these insects to see which one is actually worse than the other. The carpenter bees and bumblebees live a little bit different lifestyle. They're technically not both bumblebees. Bumblebees are in the family of Bombus, and this is known as the Xylocopa. This is the large carpenter bee. Now both of these insects have the potential to generate a pretty good sting. So let's just see which one's worse here today. Now I will say the carpenter bee is slightly larger than this particular specimen of bumblebee. Let's go ahead and induce a sting. We'll start with this xylocopa right here and see how painful that actually is. This is the xylocopa sting test, the large carpenter bee. One, two, three. Okay, I feel it. I always brace myself for these stings. I feel it for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, it stings. It took a second, but it stings a lot. I'm actually just gonna let her go. I definitely got a sting, so here she goes. Bye, Zalacopa. Nice meeting you. Here is the actual initial sting set. The initial sting is actually just below that red mark. That red mark is actually from a different species. It's actually starting to form blood now, so we will be able to see it right there. That is the initial sting site. The initial sting from the Zalacopa definitely more than a pain prick. Let's go ahead and get stung by Bombus and see which one provides a greater initial sting. And we'll be able to monitor the progress of the stings, the swelling and long-term effects to really see whether the carpenter bee or bombus, the bumblebee, the true bumblebee is worse in the long-term. This is the bombus sting test. I don't have a great placement on her, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the sting, get it over with. Let's see if you can see this. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, oh her stinger is lodged in my skin, look at that, her stinger was lodged in my skin, oh my goodness, did you see that? Whew. Honestly, uh, the initial sting of the xylocopa was slightly worse, wait a minute, this one's actually getting a little worse now, uh, let's give this a few minutes and see what the prolonged effects of both stings are. Um, already there is a pretty good wealth right here you can see starting to form and then this one doesn't have a wealth yet but it's going to take a minute so I'll give it 
a about a minute and we'll be able to mark both of these swelling areas and see just how bad they progress to be. And after about a minute, this is the Xylocopa sting, initial sting area. And then this one's about a minute or so also. And this is the Bombus or Bumblebee initial sting area. Not nearly as pyramided up, but it seems to be broader and more dispersed out. So that's the two stings. Mental note, don't get stung by bumblebees on purpose. The Xylocopa sting felt like zero compared to the sting of the true Bombus. The uh, sting of the Bombus just overwhelmed. I couldn't even feel the sting of the Xylocopa anymore. You can still see the residual there, but hardly anything compared to the Bombus. Now the question is, is the bomb is so much worse because it was lodged and embedded into my arm for a longer period of time or is the bombus sting truly just worse because of the type of venom that the bombus has or the bumblebee about 15 minutes later and you can really see the swelling side on the bombus sting however the xylocopa has pretty much dissipated where it's almost unrecognizable if it wasn't for the circle that i originally encircled you wouldn't even be able to see it this is, this is the Bombus sting site, pretty swollen. And this is, in the circle there, the Xylocopa, about 20 minutes into it. Five hours later, and there is definitely a whelp from the carpenter bee. Five hours later, and my whole arm is swollen. There's a hole in my arm. It's been 24 hours since I was stung by the bumblebee. And it may not look like on first appearance, but my arm is actually pretty swollen. And what I'll do is conduct a little experiment to which I will push down onto my skin to show how swollen it actually is. This right here surprisingly will leave an indent in my skin. Now when I release my finger, watch how it leaves a perfect impression on my finger. Really showing how swollen that whole area truly is.